Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys. All right. Let's go. Um, I saw a video the other day that I wanted to watch, and I figured I would wait and react to it today. Hope you guys had a great weekend, or holiday, uh, whatever. I'm back, ready to go. You guys can't see this. If you are not ready to learn, there's the door. Just home ex on the hall, all right? All right, let's go. Uh, the First cir Circumnavigation of the Earth by Magellan and Elcano. Summary on a map. I I love learning about about map making, about shipbuilding, just about the the tools that led to exploration are very fascinating to me and how those tools developed. Let's see what happened in the first circumnavigation. Go. In 1480, somewhere in the north of Portugal, Ferdinand Magellan is born. Around this time, Portugal begins maritime explorations along the African coast in search of new trade routes. One of the country's dreams is to open a new sea route to the Indies, from where come spices, which are luxury products in Europe. Soon, the Spanish monarchies also organize explorations, but towards the west, thus reaching America, which was heretofore unknown in Europe. To avoid conflicts over the newly discovered territories, the two powers agree. So Columbus never got past right there. So Hispaniola and Cuba. To avoid conflicts over the newly discovered territories, the two powers agree in 1494 to divide the world between them. Spain can claim the new lands located west of the Tordesillas Meridian, while Portugal can claim those to the east. In 1513, in America, the Spanish conquistador Vasco Nunez de Balboa is the first European to discover a sea on the other side of the American lands, which he names the South Sea. Ferdinand Magellan, who had sailed for many years on behalf of Portugal, notably in the Indian Ocean, hears about this discovery and begins to dream of finding a new maritime route to the Spanish. Interesting. Spice islands that will bypass America by heading west. You're gonna have but to go a lot the more Portuguese south. Portuguese king opposes the project, as the Portuguese already control the route to the Indies via Africa. In 1517, Magellan tries his luck with the young Spanish king, Charles V, who is more interested. Indeed, if Magellan's plan works, it'll open a maritime route to the Indies without passing through Portuguese territories in accordance with the Treaty of Tordesillas. Spain could thus import spices directly and compete with Portugal, which is getting richer very quickly as it controls trade in the Indian Ocean. The project is therefore accepted. Learning of this, the Portuguese king, to protect his interests, wants to prevent the expedition at all costs. On September 20th, 1519, Ferdinand Magellan leaves San Lucar with five ships and 239 men. After a stopover in Tenerife, the expedition heads for the land of Brazil. Then, after passing the Rio de la Plata, it ventures into the unknown, following the coast in search of a passage to the South Sea. At the end of March, as the climate cools in the Southern Hemisphere, the expedition chooses to spend the winter in a place Magellan names Puerto San Julian. As soon as they settle in, a mutiny is organized against Magellan by the captains of the other ships. They consider the expedition a failure, with some of them wanting to return to Spain. Magellan violently takes control, killing and quartering some of the rebels. At this location, the expedition meets tall locals that they nickname Patagones, which later will give the name Patagonia to the region. In May, one of the ships is sent to explore to the south, but it sinks. After five months of waiting, with the return of good weather, the four remaining ships set out again. After resupplying in another bay, they reach, on October 21st, a strait that Magellan names of All Saints, which will later carry his name. As they enter the strait, the expedition sees many fires lit by natives on the mainland. Magellan then names the region Tierra del Fuego, meaning Land of Fire. That's how it gets it. A little further on, the expedition comes upon a bifurcation, whereupon they separate to explore the two different parts. After nightfall, Captain Estevao Gomez seizes the opportunity to turn back and return to Spain. Wow. 
There, he will accuse Magellan of treason. Gomez will be jailed, and the family of Magellan will be placed under strict surveillance until his return. On November 28, 1520, the three remaining ships finally leave the strait and enter a large sea. They I love the fog of war. They quickly venture deep into it, beginning a long crossing during which water and food run out. The expedition only comes across two uninhabited and inhospitable islets. Starving, the crew eats rats, sawdust, and even the ox hides covering the masts. Further, the lack of fresh food causes a vitamin C deficiency. Scurvy. With the crew suffering from scurvy, the crossing is made in mild weather without coming across any storms. Magellan then names this ocean Pacific, meaning peaceful. On March 6th, after 99 days navigating these waters, an island is finally spotted, which they head for. As the crew is about to trade with the locals, the latter start to steal objects from the Spaniards, including a small boat. Magellan is forced to quickly leave the island, which he nicknames the Island of Thieves. The expedition then reaches an archipelago the Philippines? It will later be called the Philippines. Here, contact with the local population proceeds in a better fashion, allowing doesn't, the Spanish doesn't he uh, meet his end here? Years to trade European objects for fresh food. To impress the locals, Magellan regularly fires cannons. When he arrives in Cebu, he forms an alliance with the most powerful ruler in the region, the Raja Humabon. The local population is converted to Catholicism. But on the nearby island of Mactan, a local chief called Lapu-Lapu refuses to recognize Spanish sovereignty. Magellan leaves with 60 men to fight him. But as soon as they disembark, they face a- Guys, I don't get how quickly these these people are converted to Christianity. I mean, it, maybe it's just because they're so amazed by these ships, but they must have these cultural, you know, gods or religions of their own. And um, to be converted so quickly just by a few European ships is pretty uh, crazy. About 1,500 locals and Ferdinand Magellan embark. They Magellan leaves with 60 men to fight him. But as Spanish Sorry. son, a local chief called Lapu-Lapu refuses to recognize Spanish sovereignty. Magellan leaves with 60 men to fight him. But as soon as they disembark, they face about 1,500 locals and Ferdinand Magellan is killed. A few days later, about 20 Spaniards go to a banquet organized by the Raja Humabon. But it's an ambush and they are massacred. Only 108 men manage to flee the island. They separate into two of the remaining three ships and burn the third. On November 7, 1521, the expedition finally reaches the Spice Islands, which are called the Malaccas. They fill up their ships with cloves and provisions. The objective has been reached, but the challenge for the new commander, Juan Sebastián Elcano, yeah, is home. now to reach Spanish lands without being captured by the Portuguese, who are sailing the seas in search of them. Another problem, the ship Trinidad is... Be because of the agreement they, they had about the separation of the two, right? Is that why the Portuguese are, are chasing them? Taking on water. Elcano of them. Another problem, the ship Trinidad is taking on water. Elcano then decides to leave the ship in place for the time it will take to make repairs. The Trinidad will then head east with the goal of reaching the Spanish lands in America. Elcano leaves with the other ship, Victoria, heading to the west. On February 12, 1522, he enters the Indian Ocean, which he crosses far to the south to avoid being spotted by the Portuguese. To the east, having suffered through storms, Trinidad is forced to return to the Malaccas, where, exhausted, the 17 remaining crew members surrender to a Portuguese ship. For its part, Victoria rounds the Cape of Good Hope far from the coast, then sails back to Europe. But short of food and drinking water, a large part of the crew is dying from scurvy. Elcano is forced to stop at the Portuguese islands of Cape Verde. Knowing that they are wanted, Elcano... After seeing these ships come back, I mean, the, the, the scurvy must have been well known to people centuries and centuries, if not 
a thousand years or more before this, right? I mean, or more than that. I, I mean, it, it had to have been a common disease where people in cramped uh, conditions who didn't get a lot of sunlight or much nutrition suffered from this disease. So when they came back to a civilized part, you know, in Europe, it must have been terrifying for the people to like see these people come off the boats in some ter some terrible condition. Kano and the crew hide their identity and pretend to be returned. Kano is forced to stop at the Portuguese islands of Cape Verde. Knowing that they are wanted, El Cano and the crew hide their identity and pretend to be returning from America. During a conversation, they discover that it's a Thursday, while the expedition's logbook says that it's a Wednesday. Not understanding this discrepancy, they think they've made a mistake. Thirteen sailors get off the ship and go to buy food, but they are unmasked, probably because one of them had used cloves as payment, and cloves only grow in the Malaccas. The Portuguese, realizing they're dealing with... What are you doing? <laughs> Come on. Crew members from Magellan's expedition immediately arrest the disembarked sailors. Elcano and the rest of his crew barely managed to flee further west in order to reach the Spanish route back from America. On September 6, 1522, after an expedition of almost three years, Elcano arrives in San Lucar with 17 survivors. Adios. The numerous spices brought back in the holds largely pay back the costs for the expedition. They are thus the first people to have sailed around the world. Damn, that sounded... Unless, that is, it could possibly be Enrique de Malacca. Enrique is a slave of uncertain origins, bought 11 years earlier in Malacca by Magellan, who was then traveling on behalf of Portugal. Enrique had followed his master to the Iberian Peninsula, from where he took part in the expedition to the Spice Islands. In Cebu, he spoke Malay with the local population, but after Magellan's death, he wasn't released, as the captains wanted to keep him on as an interpreter. He was the lone survivor of the banquet ambush, and was most likely probably in on it. It isn't known what happened to him afterwards, but if he did manage to return to his native land before Elcano arrived in Spain, he would be the first man to have circumnavigated the globe, taking 11 11 years to do so. That was cool. Cool video for sure. All right, guys. Um, I am going to probably a history hit or a geographics video, maybe a biographics video. Awesome. See you guys next time.